So I'm Zoe Walker, I'm one of the tech leads at Nourish Care and I technically lead the core care team. So we're in charge of keeping the platform running and also adding new features that are key to our offering. So our product is a SaaS product, it's a digital care management system. So this allows carers to plan, record, coordinate care and uh, report on what they're doing. For example, uh, someone might need medication multiple times a day. So we give the ability to record that and add whatever they need. It's all very highly customizable to make sure that the care supports the person that needs it. Uh, so we currently have about 400,000 people that we support and we have about 350,000 carers using the platform every day. And you can access it through a website or an app. So the main thing we have is a monolith, which is written in Ruby on Rails. And then it has a mixture of front ends. So we have some Rails views, we have some of it that's written in Angular, and we also have some that's written in Vue. And then we also have lots of microservices that serve that. I think currently have about 41 of them in Semaphore along with the monolith. Uh, so all of our infrastructure is in AWS. It's written in CloudFormation or using serverless, depending on uh, what it is we're doing. And it spans lots of different languages. We've got like Python, TypeScript, and Go as well. Every time we open a pull request, we run it through uh, various checks for quality before we even think about anything else. So we have it kind of in conditional blocks. So the first thing that happens is any kind of linting. And then for Rails, we have best practices that run to check that we're doing things the right way. We use things like Rubicop. And then if all those pass, then we'll then run our automated test suite. I think we currently have about 8,000 tests that run every time we do a pull request. And then if those pass, then we'll get a green tick on a, a request. And once it's been approved by someone, then we can merge it in. And then once it's merged, it gets automatically deployed to our development environment, which is where we kind of test things. And then we do uh, weekly releases to go up to higher environments. So we go from staging to beta and then beta to production a week later. And all of that is through Semaphore. I've been at Nourish for three years, I believe. Um, the current implementation of Semaphore we've been using for five years. So I spoke to Ben who implemented it and he said before Semaphore 2 we were using Semaphore 1. So I think we've been with Semaphore for a really long time and I guess we've just never felt the need to change. Like it's not something that ever really causes issues. It's ever just what we're doing on top of which might break slightly and we have to fix things. But yeah, Semaphore's great. It just it just works. So we are adding new microservices all the time and I have set some of those up in Semaphore and it has been really quick and easy. It's just a case of adding the uh, GitHub repo into Semaphore and then making sure it has the YAML to configure what happens and then yeah, off it goes, we can very quickly get it deployed. So the main one would be the parallelized test suites that we can run. So with the 8,000 tests, they take about three hours to run if you run them one at a time. But we have it running over 20 nodes, so it takes about 12 minutes, I think, to run all of these 8,000 tests. And we use something called Knapsack, which means that it optimizes how they run so that everything takes about the same amount of time. Uh, other good features. So we do a lot of uh, UI testing using Capybara and we get screenshots when those fail and Semaphore allows us to pull those out and give them as artifacts so that we can very easily see what went wrong, which massively helps because UI errors don't tend to really tell you what actually happened, but going and seeing, oh, it's got stuck on that page is like a super quick way of solving that problem. Also the caching of resources is really good. So things like node modules, we can, uh, make our builds much faster if we just cache those every time and reuse them and only we get them when we have to. Um, what else? So we have, I think we have roughly 20 production servers. And one thing that's really nice is when I do the deployment, I press one button and it just goes to all 20 at the same time. And I can easily see the logs for each one. If they fail, I can just rerun that one. And that's super helpful. And then I think lastly, just having it all in a YAML file so that we can just treat it as infrastructure as code and very easily review any changes and see what's happened and why something may have broken is really useful. So we very rarely have to use support. I asked around and most people hadn't used it. I used it 
about a month or two ago and I got a response really swiftly. They were really helpful. It turned out to be completely a me issue, but the person that was helping me still offered to like give solutions and offer advice, which I really appreciate because they could have just gone, no, that's dumb. Like, why are you asking us? So yeah, it's been really positive. The speed of setting up, it's really quick and easy. So you haven't got much to lose from trying it and it's really customizable like we have lots of different pipelines running we can block things so that certain things can't end up in production accidentally which is like a major you know stress relief um i don't even really think about a lot of what i'm doing anymore i just press merge and then know that it will be in like the staging environment in 20 minutes and it's just there and yeah it's just really easy to use so definitely recommend it